Tom, and we just met him eating at sushi at this place in Hong Kong Mall. And he's been living in Hong Kong for a year and a half. He's originally from Chicago, and what made you want to move to Hong Kong? Or first of all, introduce yourself and uh, okay. tell us whatever you want. About. Okay, hi everybody. I'm Tom, uh, originally from Ann Arbor, Michigan, uh, mostly from Chicago. And I'm an expat living here in Hong Kong. I've been here a year and a half. I work in the financial services firm, and it's been a great experience. And I just happened to run into Cody and everybody here over sushi, and we've been talking about life in Hong Kong and life in the U.S. So what made you want to move to Hong Kong first? Because um, as you see, it's not it's very still native people living here, unlike America, which is a melting pot. I've always wanted to live abroad, and the opportunity through work to, to come up and move to Hong Kong arose. And I've been very fortunate because I've traveled a good chunk of the world, both for personal and for business, for pleasure. And there are two cities that I've always wanted to live in. One is Paris and the other is Hong Kong. Um, why did I choose Hong Kong? Well, again, because I had the job here. But also because the city really resonates. I think uh, the Hong Kong people are very kind, uh, they're very friendly to Americans, and I just found that I have a lot in common with them. How, how do you feel about being a white American living in Hong Kong? You know, as a very big minority, and yeah. you say you, you don't really speak that much Chinese, so how is it like living here as a foreigner and not speaking the native tongue? Well, not speaking the native tongue, which is Cantonese in Hong Kong, uh, it's a little bit of a challenge, but because Hong Kong has a strong background, having been a British uh, colony for so long, the English infrastructure here is enough where usually getting around is not a problem. Taxi rides are a bit of a challenge because a lot of the taxi drivers don't speak much English, but there's an app for that that I have on my iPhone. You just dial down the instruction and then it gives the instruction to the driver and can't the user in the traditional character. See, what's the app called? So it's called, talk, it's it's called Hong Kong Taxi Translator. Hong Kong uh, Taxi Translator. Kong and is that on iPhone or Android or both? You can get it. I have it on my iPhone, but you can get it on the How's it like? How's the culture here compared to America? The culture here is different from the U.S. Uh, in broadly speaking, I think that the people here are a bit more. Well, let's just put it this way: the United States people are more individually expressive. People tend to be a little more reserved socially here, a lot more conservative. Um, they also are very, very uh, cognizant of respect for public property. Now, I'm not gonna, I don't want to sound like I'm slamming Americans here, but let's just put it this way. When you ride the subway in Hong Kong, at the end of the subway line, everybody gets off, the subway is spotless. It's not even a newspaper line. Um, I think, you know, and in the subway, people are just, they, they dress more conservatively here. Uh, they don't call as much attention to themselves. Um, and I think that just goes to the cultural differences between Americans and the Hong Kong people. And you mentioned before that Hong Kong people are very friendly to Americans. And I know that in America, there's a lot of friendly people to foreigners, but also there's a lot of Americans that are very hostile to foreigners because some reasons such as jealousy or they just don't like them or whatever. Um, How is it like meeting people in Hong Kong and are your co-workers from Hong Kong or are they also expats? They're a mix. The co-workers are both expats and the local Hong Kong people and all of them speak English. So the language barrier at work really isn't much of a problem. Um, if there is a barrier to getting to know people here, it's because of the language. Some people, they're very apologetic when they speak English. They say, well, uh, I'm sorry if my English isn't too good. I keep reminding them and putting them at ease saying, your English is very good because if I can understand you, your English is good. And this is maybe a bit of an exaggeration, but I'll, I'll tell them at times that their English is better than some Americans. And so, um, you know, so getting to know people, I mean, there are some cultural barriers, but I think overall here, people are very accommodating to foreigners. Hong Kong is a world city. I mean, it's not just Americans who are here, it's also Brits, it's Aussies. Uh, there are so many people from so many different nations here. It's truly a melting pot, it's a global city. And if you have the right mindset, it's very easy to navigate and to fit in here. Okay. What was your initial impression of Hong Kong when you first moved here as an actual citizen or, or an expat worker? Yeah. And then how to compare a year, half, a year and a half ago to now? Yeah. Well, when I first moved here, um, it was a little overwhelming because all of a sudden you have this disconnect. Everything that was familiar to me in Chicago was gone, and I realized that I was in an environment where I didn't know a lot of people, and I was 8,000 miles from home. So that can be a bit overwhelming at first, but fortunately, um, I had a classmate from Indiana University who was here, and so he and his family have been very helpful.
helpful in, in getting me oriented and helping me find the apartment. And they've been a great resource to me all along. Um, but I wanted to move out here and I actually chose Hong Kong. And I already knew Hong Kong, so it wasn't as big of a shock to me as, say, an American who was told, well, you're moving to Beijing. So um, I thought it was pretty easy to get used to as long as you know what to expect. My apartment is half the size of my apartment in Chicago and twice as expensive. I don't have a car, um, but everything here is very compact and Hong Kong is a very efficient city. It's easy to get around in and it's very easy to get used to if you know what to expect. So, what advice would you give to Americans who are looking to travel to Asia, more specifically China, Taiwan, Hong Kong? Because uh, as you mentioned before, they usually lump them all together and obviously it's not like that. So, what would you give to advice? Uh, what advice would you give to first travelers going to this area and America's more specific? I'd say if you're an American and you've never been to Asia, number one, I'd encourage you to come here. The next question is, where do you go in Asia? Asia's a good place. I would say for China, Shanghai is a great starting place to go in China. I call Shanghai China Light for Westerners who are intimidated by China because Shanghai is probably the most westernized city in all of China. And it's very easy for a Westerner to be to, to feel comfortable there. They've got Starbucks, they've got McDonald's, they've got all the toys. So Shanghai is a great starting place for China. For Hong Kong. So what's your favorite ethnic Hong Kong food to eat here? And what is your favorite place to go here in general in Hong Kong? Favorite food would have to be the noodle bowls and the rice bowls. The Cantonese plays a premium on fresh food. They like their food served hot and it's, the portions are not very big. They're much smaller than in the United States. Um, and the food is not very highly processed. And so I think the eating here typically is a lot healthier. You don't find a lot of people who are struggling with their weight in this part of the world, where it's much more common in the United States. And I say that, you know, in a very constructive spirit. I think a lot of the issue is because of the food and the way the food is prepared and served in the U.S. As far as places to go, there are many places to visit in Hong Kong. Um, I like the Tiantian Buddha as a, well, more of a touristy destination, but I also like just walking up and down Queens Road Central on Hong Kong Island. I love the hiking trails. There's a place called the Dragonback Trail on Hong Kong Island, which is about nine kilometers long, and it's a great experience with terrific views of the island and the ocean. Uh, people mistake Hong Kong for being simply a, a, a very crowded, densely populated place. There are actually more open spaces in Hong Kong than there are populated regions. So if you come to Hong Kong and you see the entire island and the entire region, you realize that there's more to, to Hong Kong than just skyscrapers and crowds. Uh, to come to Hong Kong, I would say be prepared for a different experience. For example, when you eat out in Hong Kong, um, the restaurants don't always have napkins. <laughs> yes. You have to wash your dishes in hot water at the table before you actually eat. And the portions here are smaller. And I have a tax and tip. Oh, yeah. And also, no, t yeah, no taxes, no tipping, which is something that I had to get used to. That's nothing I had to get used to. I would leave tips, and the servers love me because they left tips on the table. But then I found out that culturally, Asians don't like tipping. So you have to learn to, when you're in Hong Kong, do as Hong Kongers do. So you have to learn to kind of adopt their way of thinking and to set your own biases and your own experience aside. You have to be ready to do that, I think, when you move to any foreign country. And if you can do that here, again, if you have an open mind, it's very easy. You can get used to anything and you can get used to anything. And uh, last question is, what tips would you give to new expats or people who are looking forward to moving here soon for a job or extended visit? Wow. Well, I'd say, um, besides anything that I've mentioned already, I would say that when you come here, uh, if you can learn the language ahead of time, like Cantonese or some Mandarin, it helps because the Chinese, both Mandarin and Cantonese speakers, give Westerners a lot of credit for even trying to speak their language. If you can speak even a little bit of Chinese, and my Mandarin is better than my Cantonese, then you'd be surprised at how many welcoming smiles and, and, and how open and how close people feel to me when I speak even broken Mandarin, because it sends the message to them that you're trying to reach out to them, that you're trying to overcome that cultural barrier, that you're not putting a wall between yourself and them. So I would say if there's one piece of advice, if you could learn a little bit of Mandarin or Cantonese before you come to China or Hong Kong, even if it's some simple phrases, that would go a long way toward enhancing your experience. Yeah. Right, thank you.
the time for your time. It's been great, Cody. Yeah. Good morning, and, you guys. Is there any last words you'd like to say to our viewers? I would just say that also when you come to Hong Kong and you eat at a restaurant, the Hong Kong people don't like to waste food. So order less, not more. I've actually had servers tell me at restaurants, I said, I'll have this, this, and this. The server said, no, too much for you. <laughs> just two. I would look at him, I would say, you're kidding. And he was right. They just like, they're very conservative. They like to save money. They don't like to waste food. It's a very, very, very economical society in many ways. Before I forget, um, make sure to check out his blog at www.tomcorbett.com. T-O-M-C-O-R-B-E-T-T.com.